Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineeringtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss cash flow. In this video, we will define the topic of cash flow, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into solving an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of cash flow falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. Any re engineering project that we encounter will be made up of a series of expenses and credits that run over the lifetime of the project's existence. These transactions are known as cash flow. Whether it is a construction project or an R&D project, monetary transactions can take place at any point during the lifetime of the project and can be anything ranging from the cost of a piece of equipment, called an expense, disbursement, payment, etc., to a favorable return on an investment that lasts as long as the piece of equipment is in operation. This is called a credit or a revenue. So let's discuss the general workflow. When we come across cash flow problems on the exam, these transactions will typically be defined throughout the problem statement. Our first step to solving such problems is to determine the identity of each transaction. For each transaction, we need to define, number one, where it occurs in the lifespan of the project, number two, whether it is an expense or a credit, and remember they could be called disbursements, payments, revenues, etc., but they're all one of the same, a plus or a minus, and number three, a magnitude. The next step is to summarize these expenses and credits in a graphical form on what we call a cash flow diagram. A cash flow diagram will allow us to capture the magnitude, type, and timing of the individual transactions over the period of the project, helping us form the basis for an engineering economic analysis. A cash flow diagram is nothing more than a horizontal line segmented with marks representing a defined period of time. Each time a transaction takes place, a vertical line is drawn at that specific point in time representing the transaction and its unique characteristics, whether it's a credit or expense and its magnitude. All transactions, credits and expenses, are assumed to take place at the end of the period in which they occur. This is known as the end of the year convention. One often overlooked but crucial detail to note is, since there are two sides to every transaction, the cash flow directions in cash flow diagrams depends upon the point of view taken. For example, if we were to illustrate a cash flow of a loan, it would look different for the individual taking the loan than it would for the bank giving the loan. So let's run through a quick example here. A small business owner took out a loan to cover the purchase of a new piece of equipment for their assembly line. The equipment had an initial cost of $25,000 to purchase and was expected to return 6% annually on the original purchase price over the first eight years. Assuming no maintenance costs were experienced over the eight years, illustrate the cash flow diagram that best represents the scenario from the business owner's point of view. So let's go through the solution. Our first step to solving this problem will be to determine the identity of each transaction. We can do this in its most simple form using a table such that let's have this column be the year and we know the period is eight. So we have zero, one, two, three, all the way to eight. And the second column, let's make this cash flow. 
So looking back at the problem statement, we see that the business owner makes a purchase of $25,000, that's money out of his account, at the beginning of year one, or in this point, zero. So we put a negative 25,000, and after the purchase, it is expected that the company would get a return of 6% annually on the original purchase price. So 6% of 25,000 is $1,500. And this will run for the remainder of the period uh, that we are analyzing, which is eight years. Now the next step is to summarize these expenses and credits in a graphical form on a cash flow diagram. We are analyzing over an eight year period so we can draw a horizontal line with marks representing, representing one year periods all the way through year eight. So the original cost of the piece of equipment was $25,000 and this is illustrated at the beginning of year one as an expense or a minus because it's going out of the business owner's account. At the end of year one, the expected return on the investment begins to be recognized by the business owner. And this is a receipt of $1,500, or like the problem statement said, 6% of the original uh, price of the equipment. Now this receipt is recognized for the remainder of the defined period of eight years. So we can put vertical lines uh, all the way to the end. These receipts are illustrated on the cash flow diagram as positive vertical arrows at annual increments. So that's about it. Now there are a few common ways individuals trip up on a problem like this. One way is to incorrectly account for the expenses and credits as they are seen from the business owner's perspective. It is important to note that all receipts are counted as positive transactions into the account, so vertical lines in the positive direction, whereas purchases, expenses, are viewed as negative transactions out of the account, so negative lines are, are arrows downward. Also, we could have incorrectly deducted the positive return on investment of a 6% from the original purchase amount of $25,000. The problem states that the return on investment is based off the original price for the duration of the lifespan. So if we were to subtract the return on investment from the original purchase amount at the end of each period, each subsequent period's ROI would be less than it actually is. So it would look something like this with a decreasing ROI. And uh, this is incorrect because we're subtracting the ROI from the original uh, cost of the equipment, but the problem statement says that that ROI is con constant, uniform, across the period of eight years. Well, that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer.